The mixing checklist. Every single thing that I go through mentally, every single song I'm mixing, regardless of what genre it is or what type of song it is, these are the things I have to check these items off before I consider a mix done. And this is how I make sure that every mix meets a certain level of quality. Let's get into it. Okay, it doesn't matter what song or what genre you're working on, this will apply to absolutely everything. So I hope that this helps you. The very first question, the very first item on this list is what is the emotion of the song? What are we trying to enhance? Is it an aggressive metal song and we're trying to ramp people up, make them drive really fast? Is this a, a ballad in which that we're trying to make people feel something? Is it just a feel good summer song? Like what is the emotion of the song? And what is the game plan for how we're going to enhance that emotion. That's the single most important thing that we're doing here. We are selling feelings when we're mixing. So what's the emotion of the song and what what's my game plan on how to enhance this emotion? After I have that nailed down, what's the biggest section of the song? What is going to end up being the loudest section of the song? And that's usually actually where I start. The first thing that I start doing is I start working on the percussion, whether that's drums, 808s, claps, snaps, even if it's just a shaker. What's the loudest part of the song? I start getting the percussion like dialed in. So then the question is, do I have the percussion in a finished ballpark place? Am I happy with how this percussion sounds in the biggest or most aggressive section of the song? The very next question, how on top of the mix should the vocal sit? Is this a pop ballad? which the vocal has to sit completely on top of the mix with everything else way below the vocal? Or is this like an intense metal song where like the kick and snare drums are going to be louder than the vocal? Where's the vocal gonna sit in the mix? That's the next thing. And then I start working on that vocal. I do all of my EQ and my compression and my levels in this next phase. So the next thing I have to check off the list is, does this vocal sound as good as I am capable of making it sound? Is there any room for improvement sonically to this vocal? And obviously this depends on the quality of the recording, how good the singer was, how well it was recorded, how well the microphone was matched to the singer, and so on. Sometimes I will start in some effects here, some reverbs and delays, and just rough some stuff out, and sometimes I wait until later for this. It kinda depends on the song and what I'm feeling. The very next thing is what is the priority of the rest of the instrumentation? There are always instruments in every single song that have a higher priority over other instruments. At this point in the mix, I think it's really important to identify which instruments have the highest level of priority. So certainly any lead elements, guitar solos or intro leads or you know any sort of things like that, those are gonna land much higher on the priority list than you know some background ambient pad probably that's way in the background in verse one. So I roughly figure out what is the highest level of priority in instrumentation and then I start working my way from highest priority to lowest priority and I start building those things around the vocal. Now once I have most of my instruments put in and I've worked on them based on their priority level, the next question that I have to ask and the next box that needs checked is where on that priority list of instrumentation does background vocals sit? In some songs, harmonies and doubles and triples are just meant to be a texture thing to just kind of build the lead vocal up a little bit. And in some songs, they're meant to be a very standout thing that's a big part of the arrangement. And I always want to identify where on that priority list do the background vocals sit so that way I can make sure instrumentation isn't stepping on the background vocals. Same thing as the lead vocal. I always want to make sure that none of the instrumentation is stepping on the lead vocal and then somewhere down the priority level, I wanna make sure every instrument that is of lesser priority than the background vocals isn't stepping on the background vocals. So once I have that worked out, the very next thing is does this song inherently have enough dynamic range in it? Are the quietest parts quiet enough? And are the loudest parts loud enough? Is, is the arrangement of the song and the production of the song, does that accomplish a wide enough dynamic for the song? or do I have to build some of that in either with mixed choices or with automation? And depending on my answer to that question, then I go right into automation. I automate 
absolutely everything. Volume automation on everything throughout the song, effects automation, panning automation, you know, the vocals in the chorus get a little bit more reverbs and delays, and in the smaller verse sections, they're, they're usually drier, and big crescendos, if the singer's holding out a long note, I wanna push that reverb and that delay up as he's holding that note so it feels like it's a crescendo at the end of it. All of my automation happens at this stage. The very next thing that happens is I turn the volume down as quietly as I can possibly hear it still. And I want to know what things poke through the mix at that quiet volume. I'm usually doing this on my Oratone 5Cs. By the way, we're giving a pair of Oratone 5Cs away. There's instructions on how to enter down below. Please don't get scammed. I'm not gonna notify you that you have won in the comments. I'm not gonna ask you to pay any money to win these. But be sure to check out the instructions on how to win a pair of Oratones in the description below. I'm usually turning the volume down really, really quietly on my oratones. And what I'm listening for is what things are poking out. Let's say there's an intro lead guitar and a guitar solo and uh, the lead vocal. And so those are the elements and I wanna listen, do, do those elements sound like they are balanced against each other how I'd like them to be? And when you turn the volume all the way down, especially on like a pair of oratones, you can really hear what's poking through the mix. So that's when I'm doing my final level adjustments of like kick drum, snare drum, any lead instruments and the lead vocal. This is really when I'm dialing those things in. Before I get on to the next thing, I just wanna thank Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. There's links down below for every piece of gear that I use and most of those links go to Sweetwater and I've been getting all of my gear from Sweetwater or a lot of my gear from Sweetwater for a really, really long time. I can't say enough good things about them so check the links in the description for everything that I use if you wanna check anything out and anytime you purchase any piece of musical gear if you hop on any one of my videos and just use any one of the links to purchase anything that you need it goes a long ways to help support this channel and I very, very much appreciate that. The next thing is bass management. Yes, I'm not paying attention to pretty much anything below 100 hertz until this very last stage in the mix. And mostly what I'm looking at is 808s, kick drums, bass synthesizers, bass guitars. I'm only looking at the from 100 hertz down. And basically what I want to know, and this goes back to what type of song it is, it, you know, in a lot of like EDM or electronic music, sometimes the bass guitar sits uh, below the kick drum. The kick drum, the bottom end of the kick drum is higher in frequency than the bottom end of the bass. And in most other genres, it's the opposite. The kick drum is usually below the bass guitar. So the thickness of a bass guitar is 90 to 120 hertz, and the thickness of a kick drum is 40 to 90 hertz. And so that's kind of, I want to know that going into this. And then also, this is when I make sure that those relationships are appropriate. Personally, I always want my kick drum to hit a little bit harder than the bass guitar. I want the bass guitar or bass synthesizer to fill everything out and have nice solid low end throughout the song. However, when that kick drum hits, I want it to hit harder than the low end of the bass synthesizer or than the low end of the bass guitar. And this is when I make sure those are exactly how I'd like them to be. The very next step and the last step is to revisit all of those steps. Once I've kind of worked through this checklist, by the time I'm at the end here, I'm happy with how the song sounds. I think it sounds great. Send, I'd be happy sending it to the client. But just to make sure it's the best that I can possibly make it, I run this entire checklist again while I'm listening to the song two or three or four times. And I'm just mentally checking everything off. Did I nail the emotion of the song? Is the biggest section of the song actually the biggest section of the song? Is Does the percussion sound good and is it appropriate for the song? Did I nail how on top of the mix I want the vocal to sit? Does the vocal actually sound as good as I can make it sound? Did I nail the priority of the instrumentation? Do the background vocals accomplish their goal of whether or not it's just to build the lead vocal up or whether it's supposed to be like standalone parts? Did the song shrink and grow enough? Did I build in enough automation to accomplish the quietest parts being quiet and the loudest parts being loud? Are all of my effects on point? With the volume down super, super low, do I have my levels correct for all the lead things that are happening in the song? And did I get my bass management correct, my relationship? 
relationship of the bottom end of the kick drums, the bass synthesizers, the bass guitars, the 808s, etc. And on that second pass through, sometimes there's still some tweaks to make and that's perfectly fine. You want to run this checklist however many times over and over and over. And also I'll put a link to this checklist down below. I'll put a PDF or a, a, an image, a JPEG or something down below that you can download and have this for reference for your mixes. If you need to run this checklist five times, 10 times before there's nothing left to change, do that. But this is what I do mentally. I don't actually have this written down, but I do this mentally. And basically this is what makes sure that I'm sending the client the best work that I can possibly do. This is what makes me positive that every single song is the best that I can possibly make it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you got something from this. Don't forget to enter the giveaway down below. Don't forget links down below for everything that I use. And don't forget to download this checklist down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.